Harold Frederick Shipman, known to acquaintances as Fred Shipman, was an English doctor in general practice and a serial analyver. He's considered to be one of the most prolific serial analyvers in modern history, with an estimated 284 victims over a period of roughly 30 years. On the 31st of January 2000, Shipman was convicted of unaliving 15 patients under his care. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order. Shipman hung himself in his cell at HM Prison Wakefield, West Yorkshire on the 13th of January, aged 57. Shipman unalived himself in his cell at HM Prison Wakefield, West Yorkshire on the 13th of January 2004, aged 57. The Shipman Inquiry, a two-year-long investigation of all the unaliving certified by Shipman, chaired by Dame Janet Smith, examined Shipman's crimes. It reveals Shipman targeted vulnerable elderly people who trusted him as their doctor. It reveals Shipman targeted vulnerable elderly people who trusted him as their doctor, unaliving them with either a fatal dose of drugs or prescribing them an abnormal amount. As of the 1st of December 2023, Shipman, who has been nicknamed Dr. Death and the Angel of Death, is the only British doctor to have been convicted of unaliving patients, although other doctors have been acquitted of similar crimes or convicted of lesser charges. Some nurses have also been convicted of unaliving patients in the care. Harold Frederick Shipman was born on the 14th of January 1946 on the Bestwood Estate, a council estate in Nottingham, the second of three children. His father, also named Harold Frederick Shipman, 1914 until 1985, was a lorry driver. His mother was Vera, 1919 until 1963. His working class parents were devout Methodists. Shipman was particularly close to his mother, who passed away of lung cancer when he was aged 17. Her passing came in a manner similar to what later became Shipman's own modus operandi. In the later stages of her disease, she had morphine administered at home by a doctor. Shipman witnessed his mother's pain subside, despite her terminal condition, until her passing on the 21st of June 1963. On the 5th of November 1966, he married Primrose May Oxby. The couple had four children. Shipman studied medicine at Leeds School of Medicine, University of Leeds, graduating in 1970. Shipman began working at Pontefract General Infirmary in Pontefract, West Riding of Yorkshire, and in 1974 took his first position as GP at the Abraham Ormerod Medical Centre in Todmorden. The following year, Shipman was caught forging prescriptions of pethidine for his own use. He was fined £600 and briefly attended a drug rehab clinic in York. He worked as a GP in Donnybrook Medical Centre in Hyde, Greater Manchester in 1977. Shipman continued working as GP in Hyde throughout the 1980s and established his own surgery at 21 Market Street in 1993, becoming a respected member of the community. In 1983, he was interviewed in an edition of the Granada Television current affairs documentary, World in Action on how the mentally ill should be treated in the community. A year after his conviction on charges of murder, the interview was rebroadcast on Tonight with Trevor MacDonald. In March 1998, Dr Linda Reynolds of the Brook Surgery in Hyde expressed concerns to John Pollard, the coroner for the South Manchester District, about the high particular death rate among Shipman's patients. In particular, she was concerned about the large number of cremation forms for elderly women that he had asked to be countersigned. Police were unable to find sufficient evidence to bring charges and close the investigation on the 17th of April. The Shipman Inquiry later blamed Greater Manchester Police for assigning inexperienced officers to the case. After the investigation was closed, Shipman killed three more people. A few months later in August, a taxi driver, John Shaw, told the police that he suspected Shipman of murdering 21 patients. Shaw became suspicious as many of the elderly customers he took to the hospital were seemingly in good health died in Shipman's care. Shipman's last victim was Kathleen Grundy, a former mayor of Hyde, who was found dead at her home on the 24th of June 1998. He was the last person to see her alive. He later signed a death certificate, recording the cause of death as old age. Grundy's daughter, solicitor Angela Woodruff, became concerned when her fellow solicitor, Brian Burgess, informed her that the will had been made, apparently by her mother with doubts about its authenticity. The will excluded Woodruff and her children, but left £386,000 to Shipman. At Burgess's urging, Woodruff went to the police, who began an investigation. Grundy's body was exhumed and found to contain traces of diamorphine, often used for pain control in terminal cancer patients. 
Shipman claimed that Grundy had been an addict and showed them comments he had written to that effect in his computerised medical journal. However, police examination of his computer showed that the entries were written after her death. Shipman was arrested on the 7th of September 1998 and was found to own a brother typewriter, the type used to make the forged will. Prescription for Murder, a 2000 book by journalists Brian Whittle and Jean Ritchie, suggested that Shipman forged the will either because he wanted to be caught, because his life was out of control, or because he planned to retire at 55 and leave the UK. The police investigated other deaths Shipman had certified and investigated 15 specimen cases. They discovered a pattern of his administrating lethal doses of diamorphine, signing patients' death certificates and then falsifying medical records to indicate that they had been in poor health. In 2003, David Spiegelhalter and others suggested that statistical monitoring would have led to an alarm being raised at the end of 1996, when there were 67 excess deaths in females over 65 years, compared with the 119 by 1998. In addition, when abnormally large numbers of the deaths occurred around the same time of day when Shipman was on his afternoon visits and in the doctor's presence. Shipman's trial began at Preston Crown Court on the 5th of October 1999. He was charged with the murders of 15 women by lethal injections of diamorphine, all between 1995 and 1998. Mary West, 81, Irene Turner, 67, Lizzie Adams, 77, Jean Lilly, 59, Ivy Lomas, 63, Muriel Grimshaw, 78, Marie Quinn, 67, Kathleen Wagstraff, 81, Bianca Pomfret, 49, Nora Nuttall, 64, Pamela Hillier, 68, Maureen Ward, 57, Winifred Mellor, 73, Joan Melia, 73, and Kathleen Grundy, 81. Shipman's legal representatives tried unsuccessfully to have the Grundy case tried separately from the others, as a motive was shown by the alleged forgery of Grundy's will. On the 31st of January 2000, after six days of deliberation, the jury found Shipman guilty of 15 counts of murder and one count of forgery. Mr Justice Forbes subsequently sentenced Shipman to life imprisonment on all 15 counts of murder, with a recommendation that he be subject to a whole life tariff to be served concurrently with a sentence of four years for forging Grundy's will. On the 11th of February, 11 days after his conviction, Shipman was struck off the medical register by the General Medical Council. Two years later, Home Secretary David Blunkett confirmed the judge's whole life tariff just months before British government ministers lost their power to set minimum terms for prisoners. While authorities could have many additional charges, they concluded that a fair hearing would be impossible in view of the enormous publicity surrounding the original trial. Furthermore, the 15 life sentences already imposed rendered further litigation unnecessary. Shipman became friends with fellow serial killer Peter Moore whilst in prison. Shipman denied his guilt, disputing the scientific evidence against him. He never made any public statements about his actions. Shipman's wife Primrose maintained that he was not guilty even after his conviction. Shipman is the only doctor in the history of British medicine found guilty of murdering his patients. John Bodkin Adams was charged in 1957 with murdering a patient, amid rumours that he'd killed dozens more over a 10 year period, and possibly provided the role model for Shipman. He was acquitted and no further charges were pursued. A historian, Pamela Cullen, has argued that because of Adam's acquittal, there was no impetus to examine potential flaws in the British legal system until the Shipman case. Shipman hung himself in his cell at HM Prison Wakefield on the 30th of January 2004, aged 57. The Medico Legal Centre in Sheffield performed a post-mortem examination and the inquest was opened. Some of the victim's family said that they felt cheated, as Shipman's suicide meant that they would never have the satisfaction of a confession, nor answers as to why he committed the crime. Home Secretary David Blunkett admitted that celebration was tempting. You wake up and you receive a call telling you Shipman topped himself and you think, is it too early to open a bottle? And then you discover that everyone's very upset he's done it. Shipman's death divided national papers with Daily Mirror branding him a cold coward, and condemning the prison service for allowing his suicide to occur. However, the Sun ran a celebratory front page headline, Ship Ship Hooray. The Independent called for the inquiry into Shipman's suicide to look more widely at the state of UK prisons, as well as the welfare of inmates. In The Guardian, an article by General Sir David Ramsbottom, who had formerly served as Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons, suggested that the whole life sentencing be replaced by indefinite sentencing. 
for this would at least give prisoners the hope of eventual release and reduce the risk of their ending their own lives by suicide, as well as making their management easier for prison officials. Shipman's motive for suicide was never established, though he reportedly told his probation officer that he was considering suicide to assure his wife's financial security after he was stripped of his National Health Service pension. Primo Shipman received a full NHS pension, she would have not been entitled to it if Shipman had lived past the age of 60. Additionally, there was evidence that Primrose, who had consistently protested Shipman's innocence despite the overwhelming evidence, had begun to suspect his guilt. Shipman refused to take part in courses which would encourage an acknowledgement of his crimes, leading to a temporary removal of privileges, including the opportunity to telephone his wife. During this period, according to Shipman's cellmate, he received a letter from Primrose exhorting him to tell me everything, no matter what. A 2005 inquiry found that Shipman's suicide could not have been predicted or prevented, but that procedures would be nonetheless be re-examined. After Shipman's body was released to his family, it remained in Sheffield for more than a year. His widow was advised by police against burying her husband in case the grave was attacked. Shipman's body was eventually cremated. The cremation was attended only by Primrose and the couple's four children. In January 2001, Chris Gregg, a senior West Yorkshire police detective, was selected to lead an investigation into 22 of the West Yorkshire deaths. Following this, the Shipman inquiry submitted in July 2002 concluded that he had killed at least 218 of his patients between 1975 and 1998 during which time he had practised in Todd Mordham from 1974 to 1975 and Hyde from 1977 to 1998. Janet Smith, the judge who submitted the report, admitted that many more deaths of a suspicious nature could not be definitely ascribed to Shipman. Most of his victims were elderly women in good health. In a sixth and final report issued on the 24th of January 2005, Smith reported that she believed that Shipman had killed three patients and she had serious suspicions about further deaths, including that of a four-year-old girl during the early stage of his medical career in Pontefract General Infirmary. In total, 459 people died while under his care between 1971 and 1998, but it's uncertain as to how many of those were murder victims, as he was often the only doctor to certify a death. Smith's estimate of Shipman's total victims count over that 27 period as 250. The GMC charged six doctors who signed cremation forms for Shipman's victims with misconduct, claiming they could have noticed the pattern between Shipman's home visits and the patient's deaths. All the doctors were found not guilty. In October 2005, a similar hearing was held against two doctors who had worked at Sameside General Hospital in 1994, who failed to detect that Shipman had deliberately administered a grossly excessive dose of morphine. The Shipman inquiry recommended changes to the structure of the GMC. In 2005, it came to light that Shipman may have stolen jewellery from his victims. In 1998, police had seized over £10,000 worth of jewellery that they found in his garage. In March 2005, when Primrose asked for its return, police wrote to the families of Shipman's victims asking them to identify the jewellery. The investigation ended in August. Authorities returned 66 pieces to Primrose and auctioned 33 pieces that she confirmed were not hers. Proceeds of the auction went to the Tameside victim support. The only piece returned to a murdered patient's family was a platinum diamond ring for which the family provided photograph as proof of ownership. A memorial garden to Shipman's victims called the Garden of Tranquility opened in Hyde Park, Hyde on the 30th of July 2005. As of early 2009, families of over 200 of the victims of Shipman are still seeking compensation for their loss of their relatives. In September 2009, letters Shipman wrote in prison to friends were sold at auction but following complaints from victims' relatives and the media, the sale was withdrawn. The Shipman case and a series of recommendations in the Shipman Inquiry report led to changes to standard medical procedures in the UK, now referred to as the Shipman Effect. Many doctors reported changes in their dispensing practices and a reluctance to risk over-prescribing pain medication may have led to under-prescribing. Death certificate practices were also altered. Perhaps the largest change was the movement from single doctor general practices to multiple doctor general practices. This was not a direct recommendation, but rather because the report stated that there was not enough safeguarding and monitoring of doctors' decisions. The forms needed for cremation in England and Wales have had their questions altered as a result of the Shipman case.
For example, the person or persons organising the funeral must answer, do you know or suspect that the death of the person who has died was violent or unnatural? Do you consider that there should be any further examination into the remains of the person who has died? As of the 1st of December 2023, Shipman, also named as Doctor Death and the Angel of Death, is the only British doctor to have been convicted of murdering patients. Although other doctors, such as Iziaka Manmen, have been acquitted of similar crimes or convicted of lesser charges and nurses, such as Lucy Letby, Beverly Allett, Colin Norris, Benjamin Green and Victorino Chua have also been convicted of murdering patients in their care. Harold and Fred was a cartoon strip in a 2001 issue of Viz Comic also featuring Cyril and Alive of Fred West. Some relatives of Shipman's victims voice anger at the cartoon. Harold Shipman, Dr. Death is an ITV television dramatisation of the case. It was broadcast in 2002. It starred James Bolam as Shipman. A documentary also titled Harold Shipman, Dr. Death with new witness testimony about the serial and alive was shown by ITV as part of its crime and punishment strand on the 26th of April 2018. The programme was criticised as offering little new insight. A play titled Beyond Belief, The Scenes from the Shipman Inquiry, written by Dennis Wolfe and directed by Chris Honer, was performed by Edwin Flay, whose grandmother was an alive by Shipman, at the Library Theatre Manchester from the 20th of October until the 22nd of November 2004. The script of the play comprised edited verbatim extracts from the Shipman Inquiry spoken by actors playing the witnesses and lawyers in the inquiry. This provided a stark narrative that focused on the personal tragedies. A BBC drama documentary entitled Harold Shipman and starring Ian Brooker in the title role was broadcast in April 2014. The satirical artist Cold War Steve regularly features Shipman in his work. The Shipman Files, a very British crime story, a three-part documentary by Chris Wilson was broadcast on BBC Two on three consecutive nights between the 28th and 30th of September 2020 focused on Shipman's victims and how he went undetected for so long. A podcast episode from the Cautionary Tales with Jim Harford podcast series featured the story of Harold Shipman and how it could have been detected much earlier with good statistical models. The 2005 song What About Us by British band The Fall makes explicit reference to the Shipman and Alivings, and the name Shipman is sung as backing vocals during the choruses. Shipman was a member of the Conservative Party and was mentioned in the 2022 Wakefield by election when Conservative candidate Naheem Ahmed highlighted his local connections following Shipman's suicide in Wakefield Prison, claiming that voters should. Trust Tories like they do GPs after Harold Shipman. In 2023, Dead Happy, a Leicester-based life insurance firm, was criticised for using the image of Shipman in one of their advertisements. The Advertising Standards Authority received more than 70 complaints about the advert. (laughs) 